hello guys how are y'all doing today today is a random day and i just said you know what let me throw this video in you guys deserve to hear from me couple with the fact that this is the first of its kind on this channel let's see if it's something you guys like i think i had asked previously on this channel if anybody's watching love is blind and some people said yes some people said what's that some people said no well if you are part of people that said yes this is for you let's talk about this let's bant about this let's share our thoughts vibes and all of those good things this is a spoiler alert if you know guys that you are watching love is blind and you have not finished watching please keep this video finish watching before you come and watch this because there will be spoilers guys this season is insane <laughs> this season is insane it's nothing you would ever imagine i'm not going to talk about them individually i'm going to talk about them as a couple just so that we can run through this as quickly as possible so i'm going to start with johnny and amy i feel like a really good couple they feel like they have their head on their shoulder it feels like they are ticking the right boxes but there's something that is is the thing about their relationship it has to do with all the conversations around the best control and i'm not sure i like the way johnny is taking it so he's making it feel like he doesn't want kids now and he's in amy's place to make sure that doesn't happen excuse me whatever means you're going to use as a form of birth control it has to be something both of you decide i like the point where she mentioned vasectomy like you also can get vasectomy at first it was like oh that's fine if there's something a man can do i'll do it and then when he finds out it's vasectomy and then he goes to do some research and sees what it's about then he's like ah he's like i'm no longer interested he just thinks it's going to be something small that they will just tie a bow on do you know what happens to a lady when she goes through different forms of birth control you mentioned about amy and johnny guys so and this is very random i was telling my friend the same thing as well i love the relationship amy has with her family like if there's anything that is important to me you guys already know that it's family you call her telling johnny that see if you don't get my father's blessing we're not going on with this thing when i saw the kind of relationship she has with her father i can understand why she gave that caveat at the beginning that if my dad does not approve then this ends it let me tell you guys something i cried <laughs> i cried when johnny was meeting her dad for the first time another time the day they were supposed to get married and the father was like in the room where she was getting ready and was talking to her and just you know gassing her up i cried guys i also like the relationship johnny has with his sister as well and his parents it just you know and that's something i encourage with young couples if you want to get married don't also don't only look at how the your partner is treating you look at his family look at how look for love at home ensure that there's love at home because someone that grew up in love will surely or most likely treat you with love beyond their relationship i just like the family values that they are both coming from enough with amy and johnny let's talk about somebody else ad and clay so i love ad and that's because i feel like she's confident is beautiful you know uh she has a good body her body is banging is what every, is everybody's dream body i love the fact that she writes for the people she loves and that's the singular issue i have with her and clay because she writes so hard for the people she loves she's not able to look past clay's shortcomings something i need to say right now is that cheating is not hereditary so i understand that clay is going through trauma he's been in really uncomfortable position and yeah i'm not going to talk about his dad's cheating because it almost felt like that was the issue we're battling rather than clay himself so he kept on talking about his dad's cheating guy if you need therapy please go for therapy Love is blind is to find love, not to find therapy. It would be nice for you to seek help before you come into the show so you don't project your fears like you did. I felt like he was trying to lay a background that, oh, I come from a family of a cheating dad. So if I fuck up in future, it is not my fault my dad cheated. No, we are not who our parents are. Can we talk about that scene with his dad and his mom? It's one of the highlights of the show, guys. That scene, you could almost literally hold the tension in the air. His mom was able to handle everything peacefully, gracefully. She said she has forgiven him, but it was difficult to find out that there were a lot of things she did not even know about that she just found out through this experience. And I just felt like they were opening new wounds. Tell me why Clay had to take my girl to the altar and say no how why i feel like clay just sort of needed more screen time because he could have easily just told her long ago that you know what i can't go on with this thing i mean there were a lot of pointers he kept on confusing the viewers because today he's all lovey doovey and everybody was surprised well not like we're surprised but more like why did you leave this girl on and say 
no at the altar why did you have to do that you could easily have saved her that embarrassment and guy i do not rate you for that let's talk about jimmy and chelsea <laughs> guys guys those two deserve a show of their own because tell me tell me why their entire relationship was a chaos from the beginning like the whole megan fox thing well i can pardon her on that but a lot of people feel like jimmy agreed to date her because of the whole megan fox story and when you saw her he was disappointed but i think even in the relationship outside the pods he was still able to love her but chelsea was a lot to deal with honestly i'm not jimmy's biggest fan but at the end of the day i could see myself praying and begging i wish someone can drum it into jimmy's ears to leave because this is a red flag like no this is not a red flag these are red flags she kept on throwing red flags every day she was clingy yes i said it she was clingy jimmy was not wrong saying she was clingy yes she was clingy she needed validation every day the, there was no statement jimmy was making that he was not saying i love you but it felt like it was never enough she wanted validation every day and it was giving girl chill the part that also struck me as a red flag was when she disclosed a conversation they had in private behind cameras when she brought it to the open i think jimmy had had a relationship with one of his close friends and you know he had given her details of that and because she was not comfortable because they were having an argument she went on to say it on camera that after all you slept with your friend and jimmy was taking her back i think that was where jimmy made up his mind that he was not going to go on but he kept on leading her on she had complained about oh him always being out late and he said i just went out for a drink she also went on to complain oh but you're always out i don't want to deal with a man that is always out this guy said i'm with you 24 hours of the day i literally just went to make an appearance for a friend's invitation and then you're ranting i think he just led her on he just wanted her to say it on camera that yes i want you to terminate this relationship or this friendship with this girl and he just told her points like that well i'm not going to do that bye they made up after a day or so we thought things had gone back to normal tell me why he took her on that final trip and that was where he told her that you know what he no he didn't tell her straight up he asked her and i think this was where also he tried to make sure she said i do he didn't want a situation where she would come tomorrow and say after all even me i was going to leave you at the altar mm -mm, mm -mm. dude did not want to play like that if we were to go to the altar today would you say yes and she's like to get to the altar i will say i do that was where he broke the news to her and said babe i'm not going on with this thing again <laughs> i thought that was just too cold i thought that was too cold i'm like how did you get here i mean this girl has gone for bridal gown shopping how wicked can jimmy be so i'm like okay i don't even know whether i should be happy or i should be sad or i should be shocked but i think that was what i was i was shocked i was like nah this guy is cold okay so let's talk about jeremy and laura i think or should i say jeremy and sarah ann <laughs> i think that when two over smart people come together they cannot work there's no other kind of relationship can work because it felt like they were too smart for each other and i recall that even when they were meeting family one of uh i think one of the family members have said that they were always throwing really strong banters and she was concerned about that and tell me why sarah ann was sending that message to jeremy telling him in case there's a space bruh he didn't choose you he chose someone else deal with it i mean their relationship did not work out because you know he had gone out and he had lied about where he went to. apparently he sent he thought he was smart enough sent his location to laura who was at home to say oh you know what i'm hanging out with the guys here but conspiracy theory outside is that he had left his phone in the car where he thought okay the location is set here but he had gone with his apple watch guys but he still had his apple watch turned on and he went to sarah ann's house to drop her off but when he came back he lied it's a case of a smart ass meeting a smarter ass and that's why their relationship did not work guys and the fact that he was not remorseful was not being accountable for his action that put me off i was like no you can't do this and still act like it's okay so yeah it is okay this is why i did wrong i'm sorry but i'm moving on okay and he had packed up her bags and told her when she said oh i'm going to come pack up my thing i was like i packed it up just come pick it up i'm like let's talk about the last couple ken and britney 
I had so much, so much, guys. I had so much faith in this couple. I cannot understand how we got to the point where we got to. Some people said, you know, behind cameras, they had called off the relationship, but they just there to tell the viewers a story. And that's why they asked them to have that scene in the kitchen where, you know, they just spoke things through and had to tell the viewers that, okay, we're going our separate ways. Because that conversation was too cold. I felt like they were the number one couple for me on this season so when they disappointed me i was like nah i can't deal with this this is too much when we got to the point where they started talking about i don't feel the energy i just feel like things are not the way it should be i'm like you guys can talk this thing through and make it work well the fact that they threw in the towel at that point in time in this relationship in in this season just i was like no way no way so at the end of the day we went from five promising couples guys to only one getting married and <laughs> we wouldn't have thought at the beginning of the season you know when they dropped the first few episodes we were so excited like everybody was like nice five couples serious couples you know it felt like a contrast from what we had last year we felt like exactly this is what we want we want people to come out of the pods you know with renewed hope in love and all of those things and then we're happy to see five couples guys by the last episode we're down to just one couple it was only one couple guys that got married even though two made it to the altar but just one got married can't wait for the reunion there are a lot of gaps we need to fill there are a lot of questions to be asked i forgot to mention that scene with ad and sarah ann at the swimming area when they had i think it was a barbecue evening or something at the, at the pool where she had really quizzed sarah ann just to make sure that she sees how it was really bad for her to have sent jeremy that message the entire season was really nice guys really nice i enjoyed it i feel like it kept me on my toes it was unpredictable it was you know it just showed that behind when all the lovey dovey is out of the of the way you need to face the real the real issues in your relationship you can't take that away when you are done with all the butterflies in your tummy when you get your phones back when you're back into the real world where you have to combine your life your love life your work your family members and everything in between is a lot to handle it only takes the tough to survive there were other interesting characters in this season like uh trevor there was trevor there was matthew <laughs> matthew who remembers matthew matthew was the guy that kept that came with a list of questions i would say pick a number he would tell the ladies pick a number and they'll pick the number and he will ask them questions and when they want to ask him back he's like no i'm doing i'm the only one doing the asking as in he was giving me weirdo vibes i'm i couldn't have been happier that he left at the time he left uh there's also he went in search of amber guys story for another day there's also trevor who i felt had the purest of hearts but all the things i'm seeing online about trevor is making me reconsider my thoughts about him yeah i'm not going to dwell so much on that since they didn't make it i'm just limiting the is if we can't if we want to talk about each of them we'll possibly spend hours on hours on this episode but i just want to talk about the key people in the relationship the five people that got engaged and yeah let's just let's just talk about how their relationship evolved who, how they made it to the altar what do you think who did you think was going to make it to the altar that did not do you feel like some other people are, have continued their relationship outside maybe eddie and clay what do you think what are your thoughts let me know in the comment section i want to read all of it um so you can see how really excited i am about this thing let me read all about it and yeah let's just discuss and have fun about this i mean the season is over we can talk about it here yeah? and maybe when the reunion premieres after that we'll also have a conversation about it let's see if all our predictions are true and yes thank you so much for watching i really enjoyed doing this for the very first time on this channel and i hope that you enjoyed watching this episode please let me know if you want to see more episodes like this and yes i'll see you in the next one bye guys Mwah.